Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host Jason Turner, available for code reviews and on-site training. Now this episode is going to be a little bit of experimentation, a little bit of discussion about perhaps the future of the channel, and a little bit about the history of video games and some ideas for generating things in a video game. So this is going to kind of be a little bit all over the place. If you're interested in that, be sure to hang out. If you aren't, just go ahead and tune out now. But I will tell you that in this episode, I am going to uh, propose some things that might be related to the future of the channel that I want to get your feedback on and get some votes on. So just so you know, uh, you might want to watch to the end to see that. So I have up here the Wikipedia page for the Elite video game. This thing was released in 1984, and it was a hugely influential and popular video game. Now, one of the things about it is that it had a very large open world that you could explore, and a, a bigger world than was really possible on the 8-bit computers of the era. So you can see here in the Wikipedia article that the Elite Universe contains eight galaxies, each with 256 planets to explore. So that is 2,048 planets. And whatever the details about those planets were, it could have very easily uh, exploded in the size of the system here. So it says, due to the limited capabilities of 8-bit computers, these worlds are procedurally generated. A single seed number is run through a fixed algorithm the appropriate number of times and creates a sequence of numbers determining each planet's complete composition, its position in galaxy, the prices of commodities, name and local details, uh, and text strings are chosen numerically from a lookup table and assembled to produce unique descriptions of the objects. This is the kind of thing I've always found kind of fascinating, partially because it removes a little bit of the game design element from the programmer. If you can create something that that generates a believable world in a random or pseudo-random way and in a reproducible way, then you have all kinds of flexibility available to you and you don't have to worry about the the specific details of each thing this was a, a huge influence on many games most notably probably for the viewers here was no man's sky which has this very large procedurally generated galaxy as well and they do say that they originally intended to have two to the 48 galaxies available uh, but Acorn soft insisted on a smaller universe to hide the galaxy's mathematical origins. They didn't want the game player to know that this thing was actually all uh, computer generated. So this is something that's been interesting to me for a while. And related to this, a few months ago, I asked Twitter, what is your favorite pseudo random number generator algorithm? And I got lots of different responses that were not very helpful. But I got a few, notably from Nicole here, of the X or Oshiro, however you want to pronounce it. I'm not sure. But it's basically an exclusive or and a shift and a rotate and a rotate kind of thing. And we'll look at that in just a moment. But a lot of people actually mentioned this particular algorithm. And so I looked it up and I found a reference implementation of it. And then I ported that reference implementation to C++. So this here is a freely available version that has been put in the public domain and all the world, uh, parts of the world where that's possible. Uh, and then I updated it to make it const expert and such. But basically, um, there's many different versions of it. This is the 128-bit version of it. You can actually go as low as like a 32-bit version of it, which would work well on our Commodore 64 related things because that only requires 16-bit math. But you've got the current state value, which I have default initialized to 1 comma 1 here, but I also have a constructor where I can pass in the state. I've made it all const expert. The reference implementation actually had this as a static global thing, which uh, I definitely did not want for my use case. But the algorithm is like deceptively simple. It's just a rotate left with some 
exclusive or and shifts. So it's basically what the name has exclusive or shift rotate. So it's doing a rotate exclusive ors and that kind of thing. All right, so uh, I'm not going to even pretend to understand the math, but the idea is that we have a very simple, very fast random number generator. But the real question is, how do we go from random numbers to game resources? And how do we do this in a stable and consistent way? I'm interested in it being both stable and consistent, and I'll explain what I mean by that in a moment. So let's just go ahead. I'm going to print out the first few numbers. All right, so I'm generating a handful of 64-bit pseudo-random numbers, and I'm default initializing it with this 1, 1 for these two values. Now, I can give this any two that I want, but we can see here this range of 64-bit numbers that have been generated. It says, by the way, in the documentation to not initialize it with zeros. I haven't actually tried that yet. Let's just take a quick look what happens if we do that. Oh, yeah, we get only zeros back from our pseudo random number generator. That's bad. So if we initialize it so the first value is zero and the second value is one, uh, yeah, we get a different set of numbers, but it's a stable set of numbers. So we can see here, if I uh, go ahead and add like a couple more numbers at the bottom, then the first set of numbers is always going to stay the same. And then we're just going to print out the next random number. And we have that here. So we've got this way of producing pseudo random numbers from a known seed. We know every single time this program is run, or since this is const expert, every time the program is compiled, we're going to get the same set of numbers in the same order. Now you can take the 64 bit number and at the very simplest case, uh, just to truncate it to an eight bit number if you wanted to say generate some stats. So let's just go ahead and say that we want to create um, maybe a planet that has three characters in it. Uh, let's, let's do something like that. So I'm going to create a planet and I'm going to create some sort of NPC. Let's see, what should the planet, uh, just for the sake of keeping things simple, simple here, it's going to have a mass and five NPCs on it. And each character is going to have what? Um, a height and some sort of height units. I don't care. So I've got something like this. What I've been thinking through is how do I create this set of planets if I want to create more than one planet using the pseudo random number generator. So let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to add a quick helper function here that just does a quick like static cast. This is a terrible way to do this uh, if I'm getting floating point numbers back out, but it's an easy enough way for my purposes here. Okay, so just for the fun of it now, I'm going to make this do just you went 16 T's here. All right, so now I just have a set of 16 bit numbers. And interestingly, now we can actually start to see the seed here because the first value is zero, the second value uh, I seeded with 6502, and then we start to get into our less predictable pseudo random number generation here as these values get shifted around. We can see here S0 is assigned to whatever, like we could walk through that. This should actually output something in a minute here. And if you were really paying attention while I was typing all that, you should expect to see a problem. And we can see it start to realize here. 
each planet has the same mass and each character on said planet has the same height. Now, this is almost certainly not what we actually wanted to do, right? We ended up creating the same exact planet with the same characters over and over again. And how did that happen? It happened because our random number generator that we're passing in here is by value. Now, if I made these by reference, which I can do like this, then we're going to get shared state of the random number generator in here, and we're going to start to see, there we go, some differences. So let's see, if I make the planet take it by copy and the NPC take it by reference, then we are going to get planets with two different, uh, with the same mass, that is, and the same set of different uh, NPCs on the planet. Now, if I make this also by reference, then we get something that is completely different. We get each of our characters has different heights. Each of our planets have different mass. Now, the problem is, if I were to go in and add another character here, then everything gets changed. The mass of the next planet gets changed. And that's because if we think about the state of this random number generator, we are, we're getting the next value to generate the mass, and then we're getting the next value again to create the character, then again to create the character, then again to create the character, and this state is persistent. Then when we go to make the next planet, then we're getting the new mass again from the state where we last left off. And this is what I was trying to get to here. I kind of want something that is stable. Now, if we look over here at this output, and I probably should have made this bigger a while ago. What I want is that if I create two planets, one is, you know, 73, the next one's 160. And if I create four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 characters in here, it doesn't change what got created in the second planet, but the second planet is still its own entity. That is my goal. And the idea that I came up with, we know that copying doesn't work, and we know that using the same random number generator across all of the things causes this problem where one tiny tweak in what we're doing, like if we added more than one attribute to each of our NPCs, is just going to throw off the creation of everything else. So I don't want to end up with a completely different game because I added a different attribute to my NPCs. So the idea that I came up with is to fork the random number generator whenever I'm creating a new thing. So I have this function called fork and it's not a const function. And then I call next on myself. So I am mutating myself and saying, okay, I want you to create a new random number generator that has the seed based on my current state. So my current state changes, gets incremented, but I have something that is then based on a stable seed that I can pass to my child, object creator. So if I then take this, I'm going to back these back out so that this is not by reference anymore. This is by copy. And in a moment, we'll see it have, yes, all of the things have the same thing. And so the idea that I came up with, and I'm sure this isn't anything novel, just for the record, is that when I go to call make planet, make planet right here, I'm going to do a dot fork, dot fork. So I'm now going to be creating two different planets. They won't be both 73. There we go. The first one's 222, and the second one has a mass of now 165. Now, they're still creating the same character over and over again on each planet, and that's because of the copy. But if I come up here and I also make this a fork of the current random number generator state, what I should see is a way to stably create a random, pseudo-random set of characters or universe here. So 
I've got 222 and 165. Those should have stayed the same. And I've got two different sets of NPCs that are actually being created here. And now what I should be able to do is add a new NPC or actually take one away might be the, you know, more expedient thing here to do. Take one away, make that five and make five here. So 125, 0, 227, 125, 122, 124, 115. Just keep an, uh, an eye on the differences there. Yeah, there we go. So I was able to add a new NPC on the planet without affecting the NPCs created on the second planet. And I can add more attributes to NP each NPC without affecting the other NPCs that are created. And this is what I was going for. And I know that this has been a fairly random episode, and I warned you about that from the start. But this, I think, makes sense. And so I took this idea, and I kind of ran with it, and I created a bunch of random characters, because I've always just kind of been fascinated by the idea of a character generator. This is based on a couple of different things here. You might see this very long list of names down at the bottom of the screen. I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, but I did ask again on Twitter, name a single attribute that you think describes a good C++ programmer. And I got a pretty good number of responses to this, like over a hundred. And a lot of it was actually kind of interesting things. So I took these attributes and I distilled them into a few things that I think are interesting. I've got paranoia, patience, humility, discipline, inquisitiveness, empathy, meticulousness, curiosity, perseverance, humor, pedantry, like how pedantic are you, and determination. And then I'm doing a bunch of these random number generator things like we were just talking about in this episode, and I'm creating this set of stable but randomly generated characters that I think could be interesting to kind of have as characters on the show sometimes. I don't know. It's a weird idea. But here they are. They've got very, very random attributes. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. Just like average height, heavy weight, uh, average strength, um, uh, hair length of average. I've got long, medium, and short for these things, slender, heavy, and average for the other attributes. And then facial hair, like beard and mustache. And then some of these attributes that you all said make a good C++ programmer, but I put them on a scale. So it's possible for them to be positive or negative. So this first character created as a trusting, patient, mean, careless, disinterested, disciplined, fickle, and determined character. That's a lot of attributes. Uh, this person is just mean and they have no facial hair. This person, Esther here, is trusting, anxious, curious, funny, and determined. I don't know. I, I can see these as kind of, you know, actual people. Like, I trust you, but you know what? I'm still going to check the door five times, like I might, uh, before we go and leave on vacation or something like that. Careless and steadfast with a Van Dyke. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to play with this a little bit more, but the idea is that I'm going to put these characters up for you all to vote on and to tell me which one of these characters you like the best. And then I'm going to send this over to my artist that created my current avatar and see what he can do applying these attributes to some more voxel-based characters, and we'll see what we end up with. I think it'll be a fun experiment, but it's all randomly generated. Oh, and as far as the names go, I actually went to Wikipedia and scraped the most common names in the world across all regions, and some of them are listed as male or female names, and some of them I have absolutely no context for who would have a name like this, but I don't really care. I just threw them all in there as random. We'll see what you all vote on. I'm probably going to put about 25 of these characters up for you to vote on, uh, and I'll have a link in the description to do that. So if you get the opportunity, check out the link at the bottom, look at these randomly generated characters, and then let me know what you think and vote on them, if you will. I will also have a link to the source code so that you can play with it on Compiler Explorer. Here's all of the character names that I put in here. It's like the top 
uh, 1100 or whatever most popular names in the world. And here's how I map a random number between 0 and 255 to whether or not this is someone who is serious or funny. And my random number generator is two completely arbitrarily chosen values here. But another thing that you might also find interesting is to actually go and look at the disassembly of this. There's very little code actually being executed in this. Almost the entire thing is string tables and data tables. You can see this here. And that is because I have actually made this a context for character generation. Uh, thanks for watching this episode of C++ Weekly. Again, check out the list at the bottom, check out the source code that I share, see what you think of my pseudo randomly generated set of characters and take the moment to vote on them, if you will. And we'll see what we end up with for maybe a few more characters that can show up in C++ Weekly episodes. Um, and be sure to subscribe.